the worst kind of crime in the best kind of neighborhood. A place where pedestrians wave and kids ride bikes and residents take comfort in the almost complete lack of violent crime statistics. But all it took was one murder to upend this community, to inject fear and suspicion and spark a debate on whether the threat came from outside or within. Here's ABC's Dan Harris. It is an unlikely place for a murder. A tow truck driver made a grim discovery early this morning. A Mercedes Gross Point, Michigan, the posh suburb where the Motor City's early auto barons built their stately mansion. Jane Bashar was last seen about 4 p.m. on Tuesday at a meeting in downtown Detroit. This is one of the wealthiest and safest communities in America. What happened to Jane Bashar and who may have killed her? A place where there hasn't been a homicide since 1992. And Detroit investigators say they do not believe this was a random act. An unlikely venue for violence and an unlikely victim. Jane Bashara, a mother of two, a successful executive, and an active community volunteer. I was shocked, shocked and devastated. She was a mentor and a friend and a leader and just a tremendous loss. This community has watched in horror not only as details of her death have spilled out, but also as her husband, Bob Bashara, known as Big Bob, a former Rotary Club president, has gone from an object of sympathy I love you. to one of suspicion. He is a person of interest with our investigation. This mystery began late last Tuesday afternoon when Jane Bashara told her husband she was going home from work. And I got home at, at about five after eight and she wasn't around and I, you know, relaxed and, and figured she was out running an errand. And uh, as 9 and 9.30 approached, I became much more concerned. I've been calling her cell phone uh, to find out, and, th and then as time got on, I involved the police. The next morning, she was found dead, strangled in her Mercedes SUV, abandoned in an alley in a poor neighborhood of Detroit, eight miles and a world away from the couple's elegant suburban side street. Tonight, we're learning that when she was found, she was wearing a green blouse and black pants and that her house slippers were on the floor of the vehicle. Her body was apparently lodged between the front and back seats. She had several broken nails and there was a prescription bottle, police say, on the passenger side seat. The night his wife's body was found, Bob Bashar received hugs of condolence at a candlelight vigil. God bless you all. It's just uh, unthinkable that this happened to her and what she had to suffer. I am just so upset about it. But the next day, he was called in for questioning by police. I'm doing what I need to do to cooperate with the authorities to find who did this to my wife. A day after that, more questioning and a search of the family home with cadaver dogs. Police took away computers. They also administered a polygraph on Bashara, which, according to our local ABC affiliate WXYZ, he failed, although his family members say they still do not believe he did it. However, it was after that failed polygraph that police started to describe Bashara as their only person of interest in this case. Person of interest tends to be a euphemism. It means he's a suspect. And since there's only one person of interest, that means there's only one suspect. And that's him. The questions starting to mount publicly, both from Jane's family members, who say they suspect Bob is hiding something, and also from the police, who tonight confirm that Bob Bashara's version of events does not add up. He has insisted he never saw his wife the night she died, but the evidence apparently shows otherwise. If this was really a robbery or a carjacking, police are reportedly asking why would the killer or killers have left Jane Bashara's body here in this alley without taking her credit cards or her SUV, which would be worth potentially tens of thousands of dollars. When you've got valuables left in the car, you've got a body that may have been moved into the back seat, and you've got a cause of death that appears to be strangulation, those are facts that tend to be inconsistent with a stranger carjacking, for example. As the heat ratcheted up, Bob Bashara stopped talking to reporters. But his family, including his sister, started to push back aggressively in his defense. Everybody knows my brother and know that he is incapable of this act. And we are totally supporting him, family, community, friends. It simply doesn't make any sense. 
Neighbor Patrick Jones tells ABC News there were no obvious problems in the Bashara's marriage. What makes the least amount of sense is what motive Bob would have to be involved in something like this. And that the big fear now is that this might, in fact, be random. Everyone's eager to figure out what happened and hopefully bring the perpetrators to justice. Late today, hundreds of people poured into a funeral home for visiting hours. And tomorrow, Jane Bashara's funeral will be held, even as her violent death remains a mystery and her husband shrouded in suspicion. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in Gross Point, Michigan.